Hello everybody and welcome to this 14th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. Today we'll be talking about composite components and how you can create your own components by using other components to create these composite components. Now, the composite components are a special type of template that acts as a component, consisting of a collection of markup tags and other existing components. Like I said before, it's basically creating your own component out of other components. Composite components are defined by attributes of the component. Over here you can see two attributes, one called name and one called default. The name is the name of your composite component and the default uh, attribute is the default uh, value of this attribute. Then there's the method signature element, which declares that the composite component attribute is a method expression. Over here it's called action um, of the type string. And then there's the type at element, which specifies a fully qualified class name as the type of the attribute. Now there's invoking a managed bean, which handles server-side data with a composite component. It first passes the reference of the managed bean to the composite component, or directly uses the properties of the managed bean. These are shown in the example following up. Finally, there's validating composite component values. JSEF provides the following tags for validating input value components. So over here, you would validate a, um, a managed bean using this tag. You would validate a pattern using this tag, and you would validate with a requirement that the, um, a value has to be present using this tag. And now let's move on to the composite component example. Okay, so now that we're inside our NetBeans, let's go ahead and open this project and move all the way down to your composite component example in your JSF folder. Go ahead and open that project up. And this example is just gonna talk about how uh, you, we can use a component to interact with a managed bean that calculates whether the letters that you input, if converted to numerical values, add up to a prime number. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is open up our project, go ahead, click resources and easy comp. And inside here, you have primepanel.xhtml. If we see over here, you'll see that it's not much, just a head that tells you this will not be rendered, uh, this will not be a rendered output. And one thing over here is our composite interface, which declares all the labels for the name and command buttons and declares the managed bean. So you can see over here that it declares a, f uh, a few names, it declares a calculation, uh, like a calculate text, and it tells the code to run this action method, as well as it defines this managed bean. There's also another implementation which makes our code pretty by using CSS. Um, and it also has multiple, multiple um, expression languages. So now that you know that, let's go ahead to index.xhtml. Inside the index.xhtml, you'll see a few t uh, blocks of text and this form tag, which includes our prime panel composite component, which calls the prime bean from our prime panel.xhtml and the calculate action from the um, composite component attribute that we declared inside there. The way we do this is by declaring this EZ namespace over here, which calls this composite and the e com uh, easy comps over here. Following that, let's go ahead to our prime bean dot Java. This is our managed bean. We can see this at model annotation. What this is, is it's basically a combination of named and request, request scopes. So this and this are the exact same. So this just helps us save a little bit of time. And there's another annotation called at size, which checks your, um, your input and make sure that it's between one and 45. Now, if we look over here, we have our calculate method, which calculates the, uh, it takes all the numbers that you put in, the name length, and it turns it into a lowercase, and it basically adds up every time you have um, every letter inside it. And then there's checking if it's prime. So of course, if you have nothing in, then your string contains no letters. If uh, it's divisible by two, or if it's not divisible by two, then it's not prime. 
Uh, and once again, uh, if it is divisible by three and it's not div uh, and it's not divisible by three, then the sum is not prime either. If it passes all that, then it goes through this and checks if it's prime. Beyond that, there's not much left. There's just a few get getters and setters, um, like a set prime method. But other than that, um, all we gotta do is go into a services, servers, and start our glassfish server. Once that's done, let's go ahead and build our project. Go ahead, right click and click build. Once that's done building, let's move on to our Google Chrome. So go ahead and copy this link and put it over there. We got localhost 8080 composite component example. Move on and run that. And you will see that it will ask you to enter your name, any word or phrase you like, and it'll tell you if it's the sum of the letters, if it's a prime number. So let's type in Viprov and the sum is 88 and you, the sum of your letters is not prime. Now you can go ahead, type in whatever you want, try to get a little fancy around here. But um, tell me if you do get a prime number. Uh, I've, I for one haven't found anything. Let's try book. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> book is a sum, has a sum of 43 and its sum of letters is prime. And that wraps it up for today's tutorial, everybody. Um, now you can understand the usefulness of composite components. The example that you just seen before, it's not possible um, without composite components. Uh, it's because in Java EE, there's nothing like created for like calculating prime uh, numbers and like taking uh, letters and converting it into prime numbers. Like that's only possible by taking components that Java EE has and making your own composite components. So. Now that you know that, I will see you in the next video.